ministered to us in the word this morning. So, we did not stay in 
Pensacola. We had plans, and we had it all planned out what, well, I at least had a, an idea of what we were going to do. And that old man popped back up, right? <laughs> he did. I felt discriminated against because I live in Alabama. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. There's nothing on your website that says if you're from these states, we cannot serve you. Nothing on your website. So we made an hour and a half trip over just to find out <coughs> that you don't serve people in Alabama. So what did we do? We came back to Alabama and stayed across the bay. So I enjoyed myself. But it was just really. And so we found out that Mobile is the hot spot for Alabama. But it's the hot spot. Yeah. Well, oh, no, Mobile City itself is the hot spot. It has more coronavirus than any, any other city that we have. Okay. Can I say something about this mess about the coronavirus? It's a joke? No, it's not a joke. This morning on the news, now they're talking about these states opening up early, right? And they also talk about how it takes two weeks for this virus to incubate and spread. But for somehow or another, the news just said because we opened up two days early that we have a spike in coronavirus. Well, they can't even tell that for two weeks. It's fake news. That was Channel 10 this morning. I was, are you kidding me now? <laughs> really? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> we can get off on that as a rabbit trail later. Yeah, no, still. <laughs> exactly. But see, <coughs> we're going to be looking at going out and knocking on doors this morning. And as I was reading this, it's a great picture of leading people to Christ. You know, we have not knocked on any doors since February, Brother Hudson. But I want I want us to start getting back into the mindset of doing it. We're really are, we're not going to be able to do it for another couple. For, for a little while longer. But we need to be in the mindset to do it. You know, passing out of track, doing whatever we can to lead people to Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you and I praise you. Father, I just ask now that you speak through me. I ask you to guide and direct and I ask you to also Speak to hearts today, Lord. And Father, I ask you to anoint me with your spirit, Lord, that we may hear some hear from you today. Lord, I love you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Point number one. Crying out in the wilderness. Crying out in the wilderness. See, it says, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judah, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Don't you wish that's all we had to say for people to repent nowadays? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That would be awesome. But nowadays, people are so book smart that you have to get them lost before you can ever get them saved. Because money talks, because they have all these things, they are fine. It's sad. It really is. It's sad. But... Here it says, this is what he said, repent. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is, 
is he that was spoken by the prophet Elias, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord, making the path straight. How many of us are crying out in the wilderness these days? How many of us are going out? I'm just not talking about our scheduled time that we all go out as a group. But going out and letting people know who you are. Letting them know that you're a Christian and you can show them the way to heaven. But letting them know who you are as a Christian is what I'm saying here. See, we have too many people that are false Christians making a mockery of us. We have too many people saying, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. But they live exactly the same way the world's living. But the true Christians are sitting with tape on their mouth saying nothing. And saying nothing. That's sad. Here we see that one man was crying out in the wilderness. Down in the other verses which we'll get to, he started baptizing people because they repented of their sin. See, we, we can do a great job of going out knocking on doors, crying out, showing people what the Bible says about salvation. And we need to do that. We need to start getting our mindset around doing this again. It's hard when you have stopped doing it. I love waking up on Saturdays, 9, 10 o'clock if I wanted to, and not worry about, oh, I've got to go to church and go somewhere. I love that. But you want to know something? I shouldn't. I should be saying, no, I need to go somewhere. I need it. I need to do this. How many of us have gone subway and felt rotten after you've gone? Hmm? None of us. But how many of us have gone soul winning and did not want to go soul winning, but after you went, you felt like that's the thing that you should have been doing all along? Amen. See, we forget that soul winning or leading people to Christ is a blessing upon all measure. One by the mercy of God, you can take them off of you. Amen. I remember the <laughs> ones that we just led this year to the or even some of them that we led last year, Miss Gail and I think it was Miss Edith Lady, or Miss Gail and Miss Edith and Desiree led a young lady to the Lord. And Miss Gail went back. I think you brought her a Bible if I remember right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm talking about here. Being fired up to tell other people about what you've got. One of our members just today said it was good for one, someone to be with him watching all these bikers and then praying. See, that's what it's about. Showing our Christianity 
the right way. Amen. The right way. We have too many people that want to say they're Christians. As I just said, they're living just like the world. <clears throat> I see it every day. Oh, I'm a Christian, but then once they, they'll come to my line and say, oh, I'm a Christian, and then they'll have people in the car, and they're talking about going out drinking, talking about going out lying with this one, sleeping with this one. Christians ought not to do that. But we forgot. We forgot the Great Commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We forgot. See, our country, unfortunately, our country needs missionaries to our own country. That's a shame. Where we were the top country sending missionaries out to other countries, we need them here. We have churches closing by the dozens. Why? Because people are forgot to be crying out in the wilderness. Just like John. Just like John has done. Preparing the way for the Lord. See, I love when we go knocking on doors, Brother Hudson. When the last time that we went knocking on doors, one of the last times that we went knocking on doors is with Joe Willis when he was here at the beginning of March. So it was in March was the last time we went knocking on doors. And Melissa's sitting in the car. She's taking pictures of me and Joe Willis leading this guy to Christ. You know something? <clears throat> Wasn't that hard? Really? He's, uh, he was already thinking about God. He was already contemplating salvation. How many times do you have to really plead with someone to come to know Christ? When they're ready, they're ready. That's why we pray before we go out and say, Lord, lead us to the ones that you know or accept in you. Now, does that tell that we should stop knocking on doors and just go to the ones we think that God was going to lead us to? No, no, we have to pray to you. See, because we don't know. We don't know. But he does. Lord, prepare the heart of the one for the ones that you want us to lead to the world. Prepare their hearts now. See, we as Christians have forgot to go crying out in the wilderness. <laughs> crying out. We forgot. The title of the message is We Forgot. We forgot to do these things. We forgot to go knocking on doors. If we did, we would have more people in church. That's right. Well, preacher, we've been doing this now since you've been here 40 years. We're not full yet. We're not growing as what we should. Who says that we're not? Do I want five tithing families this year? Absolutely. <clears throat> but guess what? God gets, gets the increase. That's right. Okay. It's God. We can do everything that we've got to do, and it's God decides when the harvest comes. Not us. Not us. Yeah. <laughs> it's not us. But we forgot to cry out. That's a shame. We as Christians, I'm not talking about just our church. I'm talking Christians in general here. Verses 5 and 6. 
then went out unto him, Jerusalem, Judea, and all the regions around Jordan, and were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sin. See, when we go out, sometimes, Billy, they come to us. Sometimes they will come to us. Here in church, friends, y'all heard the story about the one guy that, when I was working at Mobile Lumber, got ran over by the, I think it was a dump truck or a cement truck, I don't remember which one. We were in Pensacola, down by the Pensacola Beach, driving down there. I opened my mouth and said, isn't it shame of so-and-so that gets you to start thinking about where you're going to die, if you would die, where you're going to go? And he looked at me and says, yes, I know you're going to tell me. Sometimes they come to us. They really do. Sometimes they come to us. Just like here, they came to John, crying out in the wilderness. But see, just knocking on their door, putting the Joy, give me a track and a door hanger. Putting the track or a door hanger down. How hard is it? Grant you, I know that some of y'all have a hard time walking. I understand this. Okay, I really do. I've got two guys here that, that, that who when we go out so, so winning, they come and start praying for the ones that are going out. They give just as much of the credit as the ones that are going out. Grant you, I understand that. But how hard is it to knock on a door, to knock home, hang on the door now? It's not hard. They don't answer the door. But how hard is it when they do answer the door? Hi, I'm Pastor Smith from Pioneer Baptist Church. Go around biting the feet of the church. You go to church anyway? No? Great. You're the one I'm looking for. Sometimes that's not very good to say, but I do say it sometimes. Talk to them about the church a little bit. But let me hand you this. Oh, but, but before we go, let me ask you the most important question that anybody's ever going to ask you. If you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Yes. Great. Why is that? I'm a good person. I don't steal. I don't do this. I don't do that. You get that a lot, don't you, Mr. But then I get to tell them, well, the Bible says that we all fall short of the glory of God. And then I tell them, well, you might have only sinned once, and maybe down at the 50% mark, even though that you only might have sinned that once, you still fall short of the glory of God. There's no way to get yourself there. Being good is not going to cut it. It takes something else. See, We've got to remember to be crying out and to give the gospel. Crying out is knocking on doors and telling us telling them about Jesus Christ or telling them about the church is great. It's great. You pastor, does that mean you do it every time you go knocking on the door? No, I don't. Why is that? Because there's times that when you knock on the door, Brother Hudson will contest with this, that spirit says, not ready, just leave me in the track. Just leave me in the track. You know, there's there was one time that we were in camp before, actually it was a door hanger. We don't know who did it, who left the door hanger. But left the door in three months ago by each other. The 
this person started having some issues. They, they came to church because someone opened the door and they were having issues and they wanted to know how to get them fixed. That Sunday, really, that person accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. See, we've been doing this now, though, putting tracks out, door knockers out for four years. And we've only had one person come from knocking on a door. One. See, God doesn't promise us, get this now, this is where I had the hardest troubles with when I first started knocking on doors. God doesn't promise us the doors that we go knocking on or the people that we talk to. He just tells us to go. And he will get the in, give the increase. We never knocked on the Cackley's door. We never did. They started coming. We never knocked on Chuck's door. Melissa and I met Chuck at a TBI meeting. We just started sitting down. When we were sitting down, Chuck asked if he could sit with us. Sure. And then Chuck just started talking and talking and I don't even know what I was saying. <laughs> talking and talking. He talked about everything. But but we would listen. That's what made the difference. We would listen. And at the end, we said, love to have you. Well, I don't have a right. You just call me and I'll come and pick you up. That Sunday or that Saturday, he called and said, can you pick me up? This is Chuck. Can you pick me up? Sure, give me your address. The rest is history. We didn't go knocking at his door. But just like John crying out in the wilderness, <laughs> just like in John in the wilderness, sometimes John probably just was sitting there listening to other people. People. Being a preacher. Proud of preaching the gospel. Just being there. Help us. Point number two is people accepted Christ. We've already read it. People accepted Christ. See, it isn't us. We've got to get that out of our head. Well, I can't talk or I can't do this, and I can't do that. Guess what? You're absolutely right. Neither can we. You're absolutely right. I can't on my own. But he can use me. Because we can't do it on our own. Can we, Brother Hudson? It isn't in our strength. It isn't in our nature to go and talk to people about someone that we've never seen before. The old nature. But it should be in everybody's nature after that accepted Christ. It really should. And people will come to know Him as Lord and Savior. All we do is got to open our mouth and allow God to do the talking. Allow God to do the convicting. There's times that I've knocked on a door and started talking and, and didn't say hardly with two words. And that person came to know Christ. Yeah. I remember with Jordan, myself, Jacob, were knocking on, on a door and we started talking and the husband's off doing the shutdown work. The lady was there. As a matter of fact, actually, there was two. The, the lady in there, um, 
son, son and daughter. I forgot their names, but anyway, too. She came. She said she knew Christ as her Savior. But guess what? It isn't up to us who comes and who doesn't. It's up to God to do the convicting. It's up to God to do the saving. But we just got to do it. We just got to go cry out. No matter where we're at. At a restaurant. At the gas station. At the grocery store. Walking up and down the road, if you can do that. Some of us live a little on busy roads like this right here. No matter where we're at. We can pass out the church. I see a couple of people right now that have tracks in their pocket. Billy's got it. I can see my father in law's got one. Why do they do that? Why do they? They're going to get sweaty and nasty. Why are they going to do that? Because they don't want to see people die and go to hell. Why does Melissa get upset with me when I'm rushing her out of Walmart because I don't want to be there any longer than I have to and we get through the line and she says, you made me miss an opportunity. So I have to stop and say, well then go back and give it. Too late now. And then we'll have Desiree and Jordan go one back there and get it. Give it to them. Why does she get upset? Because she does not want to see people die and go to hell. See, we've got to start crying out on them louder and harder than we ever have before. We have to. People will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We just got to cry out. We just got to start crying out. Well, preacher, you're the one to stop the, um, us going and soul winning and knocking on doors. You're right. I did. Through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, I believe, yes. Even now, the prompting of the Holy Spirit of doing what is do we have to go knocking on doors? Yes, we do. But do we have to stop crying out in the wilderness? Never. Never stop. Never stop. No matter what. Point number three. We will have naysayers come. We will have them come. How do I know this? Just this year, or was it last year at the end of the year? Brother Hudson and Jordan knocked on the door, gave a Bible track to the young lady that was there. Her mom called me up and started giving me what for, that they're happy being a Catholic, they're fine where they're at, do not come to our door anymore, we don't want your stuff, And you're not going to change our religion. Um, she wasn't fighting with me. She was fighting with the Holy Spirit. She really was. But see, we're going to have him come. Right here, it says in verse 7, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. You know, he started speaking out against them. But we're going to have them. We'll have someone come and say, that's not the way it should be done. You're wrong. This is right. How dare you tell me that I'm lost and going to die and go to hell. I've had people say that to me. 
I have to tell them, it isn't me that's telling you this. Excuse me, yes, it's my voice. But I'm just showing you from the Bible. Oh yeah, all you got this are the same one. Guess what? You, you know what I tell them? I knocked that off for the first, one of the first things. I'm not talking religion here. I'm talking Bible. I'm not talking what the Pentecostal do, or the Catholic does, the Baptist do, or the Independent Baptist, Southern Baptist. I'm not talking that. I'm talking Bible. I'm talking what God says and nothing else. See, I try to get that straight off the off the bat. I'm not I'm not I'm not talking religion because the religion's gonna send you to hell. Let's talk about the Bible. Let's talk about what the Bible says. See, we're gonna have these kind of people. You're gonna have those kind of people when you're knocking on the door, yell at you, and slam the door in your face, and cuss you out. Not so much here, but Tampa, Florida, Ocala, Florida, Den Ellen, Florida, where we've been knocking on doors, they do that. They don't want to be bothered. People don't want to know about sin and what the consequences are. And then lastly, we're all going to be gathered together. We're all going to be gathered together. When he comes back to take us home, we're all going to be in this together. We're all Christians. All the Christians are going to be gathered together. It doesn't mean that, that, that someone might be Catholic religion and accepted Christ one day as their Lord and Savior and never come out of the Catholic religion, Pentecostal, Baptist, whatever it may be. We're all going to gather together. All. He's going to gather us together. And the unsaved, it says, is going to be a fire. He's going to burn the shell, chaps. Talking about the unsaved. And his hand is going to be the fan. Man, we need to start crying out more. We need to start crying out. We need to be telling more and more and more people. But we live in this Bible Belt. And everybody knows the language about being saved. That's the reason I don't ask people, are you saved? I ask them, are you 100% sure if you would die today, where you going to go? Yes, I'm going to go to heaven. Why? But they can't give you a clear cut answer about accepting Jesus Christ as well, the Lord and Savior, as you know. It's time to try to lead them to Christ. Crying out. Letting people know who we are. Instead of being in the background, complaining about our country. And saying, oh, this country is going here. Well, then, that's our fault. Because the Christians are not crying out like we should. We're, we're still, for the most part, majority. But how many times have you heard, oh, I don't know, we don't want so many anymore because we don't want to offend anybody. I've heard that. Or, I don't, I don't want to talk about, I don't, I don't talk about Christ out there anymore because too many people argue about it. It isn't for us to make that decision. That's right. It's for God to make that decision. We're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to go, and, and right, and be bold, to tell people about Jesus Christ. And if you get stuck, I'm only a phone call away. If I get stuck, he's only a phone call away. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? 
We're here. Let's start crying out for the cause of Christ. Because it's Him and only Him that we shall serve. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you and I praise your precious name. Father, I just ask you now to help us guide us into our existence. All of you say in the name of Jesus. Amen.